Hey friends, it's Jill here with the Hometown Homestead, and today I'm back with a very popular topic on this channel, which is math with confidence and the pilot program. We're going to talk specifically about a few details for grade five, as well as talk about how we wrapped up grade four and what I felt about it. And this actually was inspired by a question that was sent to me in my inbox from one of you who watches the reviews as well as takes part in the Math with Confidence um, family Facebook user group. So if you're not over there, make sure to get in. There's lots of great information shared. And just so you know, you must, must, must fill out all the questions uh, for the Facebook group or you won't be approved. So make sure you're doing that. Get on over there to get some more information. And let me share this question with you because I think some of you might have a similar one yourself. Okay, I'm gonna read this straight to you just so I don't get it wrong. So bear with me for a moment while I read from my paper. It says, I have just received third grade in the mail. I love this program and have completed the lower grades, but I am suddenly having doubts that it might not be rigorous enough. That is not even a priority for our family, but I'm getting stuck on it. I know you have children in the pilot. Can I let this go? Do you have concerns about this at all? Any information will be helpful. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of my response. This went back and forth for quite a bit, so I'm not going to share it all with you, but I want you to know the gist of what I told her. I said, hey there, finishing up the grade four pilot, my kiddo is able to make mental conversions on fractions solve real life word problems as they arise and is doing great in long division. Going into grade five, I'm not really sure what more I could ask for. Um, during the conversation, I realized that I never actually did a wrap up of our grade four to let everybody know how it ended. I kind of left you hanging out there in the middle. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit with, of that process with you and how we ended up. So overall, our experience was really, really great. Um, my son is a little resistant to school in general, so I'm never going to get something that he is 100% in love with just because he is a little boy who would rather be doing other things. But it was really, really great. And the constant review worksheet every single day kept us moving forward with, um, and cementing, I should say, the things that we had learned prior in the year. And we didn't have that lag where he completely forgot about things. And I'm noticing that that's really paying off right now as we're getting into year five because we jump right in with review pages on day one and he's still able to access that information that we left off with in June. So the daily review is a huge hit for us. He's done really great with fractions, as I mentioned before, and he's also done really good with long division. Uh, I feel like the process and the way that it's actually taught in math with confidence was super helpful to him uh, and kind of helped to put the process in his mind in a way that he can easily recall. So I feel like all in, the, the main objectives that you're looking for in grade four are definitely going to be covered in Math with Confidence. And it is a program that was able to move us forward without pushing so hard that we felt like we got plowed over. And he had a lot of, he I should say he didn't have a lot of stress surrounding our math experience last year. So I really feel like last year was a huge transition for us away from our previous years with Singapore um, dimensions as well as primary 2022. If you haven't seen my comparison video on all three of those, make sure to check it out because I will link it below. I know sometimes it's really hard to be in the younger levels of math with confidence because you don't really know where the end's going and you feel like since it's not already completed that you can't confidently step into it knowing that you're going in a direction that's going to pay off for you in the long run. But I just want to tell you, I don't think that's a founded fear because, or I should say a well-founded fear, because Kate is very knowledgeable about um, math teaching and instruction, as you can see from her bio, but also she is really, really, really um, interested in parent feedback and making changes as she goes based on what we're seeing and how our experiences are with the kids. So this is something that has really been thought out well, uh, and the process is going really smoothly as far as what we're seeing. So all of that said, I want you to know we did go ahead and decide to sign up for grade five, and we have actually just started week one. So I have a few details to give you on the changes that you can look forward to, um, as well as kind of how it's going for us and a peek into our favorite activity. But as far as the more like in detail, like how it's going to go down the line, you'll have to like and subscribe to the page to follow along with my mid-year update around Christmas, as well as hang out a little bit longer to see how it's turning out for us all year round.
With that said, there are some pretty major changes. Um, one, the fifth grade year has a goal of fostering a little bit of independence and getting some study habits and process for the kids. This is still a hands-on program and you will be very involved with the teaching of the math itself. But when it comes to review time or when it comes to their worksheet time, they are to take control and take ownership and access something that Kate's plugged in this time, which is a study guide that gives them the details that they need for each individual lesson. So if they are to get stuck on something going on in that lesson, they can refer back to some unit study pages that she has actually made. And I'll put in some screenshots here, but just to give you an idea, this is a unit one reference page, and these are going to be out um, for at the beginning of each unit so the kids can have access to go back and look for information that they might have missed along the way. So with our unit one being review, um, the first lesson is order of operations, and then she has the parentheses and brackets details here that we're working on in the lesson, but then she also has some examples so they can see how that actually puts itself into action into a problem. Then there is the lesson number right over here beside it. So if they're working on lesson three, they need to go to the 1.3 reference page section, inverse operation, so they can see that the opposite of addition is subtraction, the opposite of multiplication is division, and how to take a look at a word problem or any problem and use the inverse operation to come up with the answer. This is super cool. So as a mom who has three different levels going at the same time, to be able to foster a bit more independence for my older guy is really, really, really going to be helpful this year. And so far, I'm loving these pages. And the fact that they're going to be available for every single unit is really great. Now, what I might do is just keep these in a separate section of our five-star note binder to where we can access those all year round in case he's having something come up on a review problem. I can show him where to go back in his notes and look for that. So that's kind of a tentative idea I have, but um, the review and reference pages are something that have been added this year that I think are going to be really, really helpful to us as teachers and to our students as well. Now, just like in years past, there is still one page that the teacher will work through with the student, and then there are two additional pages that the student will do themselves. So the one page will have two heads on it. Uh, alerting the student as well as the teacher that it's an activity to be completed together. And then the next page and, and following page will also just have the one. When my son sees two heads, that means my pencil is going on the paper every single time. He is absolutely not going to write more than he has to. So for the lesson activity pages, that's typically somewhere where I will scribe all of the writing. He will give me the answers and we'll work through it together. And then the following pages he will actually be taking those over and working on them himself. I will say that so far week one, there are less games in level five. Now, does that mean that there won't be games? Absolutely not. I thought that was really fun because he's actually doing a, kind of his own cost benefit analysis on a vacation, which I think is something always good to give context to for young ones. All of that to say, if you're wondering about the future of math with confidence, it is awesome. It is looking fantastic. The activities are still there. We do have games in five. So they'll still have the actions and activities that you loved about all the previous years with a few added bonuses to foster that independence and study skills that they're gonna need moving forward as they head on down the line with other subjects in the future years to come. If you'd like to follow along with those grade five pilot details as we come through the year, definitely make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video with other people who are interested in Math with Confidence and might be curious what the future looks like and if it's a program they can trust long-term. I will definitely be taking you along for the ride as we cruise through grade five. So please hang out and make sure to leave any questions below. Thank you all for stopping by the Hometown Homestead and I hope to see you back real soon.